This is how I learned to code from scratch and got a job offer as a software engineer in just four months with no CS degree all on my own using the internet. So I made a video on this topic before that's actually still the most popular video on my channel but I wanted to make an update video on this because if I were to do this again in 2023 I would actually do some things very very differently and there's things that I've learned and trends that I have discovered that would allow me to do it even faster and with a lot less pain. So while you can still do it there's a couple of things that you need to do so you can avoid the most common learning to code mistakes beginners make that cause them to never get hired and instead end up in the programmer graveyard. And there's especially one strategy that tons of self-taught programmers use today to get jobs very fast but most people completely miss and it's so powerful that had I known about it at the time it would have completely changed my strategy of how I would go about getting a job. But before we talk about that we need to set some context so that we can fully understand what these big changes actually mean. Why did I leave an extremely fancy consulting job to learn to code from zero? Why is learning to code so hard for a lot of people? And what did I do to overcome this, including some things I did not tell in my original video? And how did I manage to get hired with zero project, zero interview skills, and literally no experience? First, let's talk about the why, and this might resonate with some of you. So as humans, we are the average of the five people around us. At university, I studied economics, and in the sphere of economics students in London, every single person around you wants to get into one of two industries, finance and consulting. So of course, being the sheep that I was, that is exactly what I wanted to do. I had internships at some of the biggest and most prestigious banks and consulting firms out there. But I slowly realized that as much as it was glamorous to have all this prestige and sort of glamour that these industries would give you, inside I felt completely empty. I did not want to spend my time making PowerPoint slides about freaking forestry companies in Finland. I realized that what I really enjoyed doing was problem solving, doing something intellectually stimulating and challenging. So I went online and started learning to code. And I quickly realized that yeah, this was not going to be that easy and I felt completely lost. So before I tell you the rest of the story of how I overcame that, there's one thing that I really wish I had during my journey if I were to start over. Now throughout this journey, there was one thing I was definitely missing and that was some sort of one-on-one -on -one mentorship. After all, I was a complete outsider in the industry with no fancy CS degree to get my foot in the door and absolutely no connections in the industry. So I didn't really know how I could ever find a mentor like this. But if you're in this situation where you're feeling like you're stuck because you're having to figure out everything on your own, there is an online platform called Preplaced, who are the sponsor of today's video, where you can find online mentors to guide you through your journey. At Preplaced, you can find mentors who are experts in whatever domain or area you're interested in, from data science to getting into the big man companies, which means that you can get personal mentorship from experts who have actually done it and who have actually worked the jobs that you're trying to land. Your mentor can help you do mock interviews, keep you accountable, and walk you through the exact steps you need to land your dream job. So when you go to Preplace, you can just browse through the different mentors and then find one that seems like the right fit for you. And then what you can do is book a free trial session with them so that only after you've already spoken to them for free, you can make an informed decision about whether they're the right fit for you and whether you want to move forward. So we'll leave a link down below to Preplace for you to check it out. Thank you for Preplace for sponsoring this video. And most importantly, thank you for Preplace for creating this platform for us to find mentors. So when I started, I had no idea what programming even was. The idea of writing commands in the terminal really scared me and I didn't know which languages to pick. And this is something that I really failed to talk about in my original video. Like it might seem like, oh, I'm this like super successful YouTuber guy who just like did it and it was easy, but it was anything but easy. I really, really struggled in the beginning and I could have just as easily failed like so many people do. And honestly, the biggest reason, and this might not be what you want to hear, is like I just had a massive fear behind me of like I did not want to go back to my own life like it was just not an option for me to fail and that was the thing that kept me going in those moments when I just felt completely lost. To really succeed at something really hard like this oftentimes there needs to be some sort of fire behind you that's really pushing you to move forward. Maybe for you it's something similar to me like you're working a job right now that you should completely hate and you need to get that programming job so that you can get out of the situation you're in. And like 
like this might sound like unhealthy advice, but honestly, in the beginning, it's useful to use whatever fear that you have to keep you going. And so that was the thing that was just able to get me to just go online and literally just write on Google, like how to learn to code. And to just keep reading these articles, spending time on Reddit slash CS career questions, like find out all the information that I wanted because failing just wasn't an option. And anyone can do this. Like if you just have that fire behind you and you're just not willing to quit, it's impossible that you will fail because all the information you could ever need to learn to code and get hired is out there. You just need to have enough drive and discipline to go and find it. So through all this, I eventually came up with a roadmap for ourselves. The courses I did first were Python for Everybody, CS50, and the first part of the Odin project. Now this is a completely free path to learn to code that would still work today. Now there's one massive modification that I would actually make to this journey today if I were to start over, and we'll get to what that is in a second. But first, you need to understand one more thing, and that is how was it that I was able to get a job so quickly? Like for most people, this is a massive struggle because yes the day I got my job offer was almost exactly four months after I wrote my first ever line of code well to be completely honest there was a lot of luck involved one of the consulting companies I managed to do an internship in was Deloitte and the division I applied for was specifically their technology division and it was actually during this internship that I figured out like this is not the industry I want to work in I want to become a software engineer, but it just so happened that the company also hired software engineers. So I learned that, okay, this is by far the best chance I have right now as fast as possible to get hired. But why would they hire some random guy as an engineer with no previous tech background? And this is where I put my sales hat on. And basically I found a way to speak myself to get an interview for an engineering role to convert my internship instead of a consulting role. And I talked about the progress I had made on my own and they were willing to give me a chance. So what is the lesson here? To get a job as fast as possible, you just need to get massively lucky that you happen to work at a company who's willing to give you a chance like this. Well, no, but also yes. Any success requires some sort of luck. Like you might not want to hear that, but it's just a fact of life. And so to break in faster than most people, what you need to do is put yourself in situations where luck is most likely to happen to you. I had particular circumstances, but what I would do if I was starting over is I would strategically think about how can I maximize the probability that situations like the situations I was in are going to come to me at the highest rate possible. So what I tell people to do and what I'm gonna tell you to do now is to do the things to maximize your chances of success. And there are three specific things that I would do differently today from what I just told you. The first thing is about what I learned and when. Now, when I got my job, I was also lucky because the company did not actually have a technical coding interview at all, like most big tech companies. And this is a reason why many people don't properly study for them. It's true that not every company has a rigorous lead code style interview. But if you wanna maximize your chances of getting hired, you do not want to limit yourself to companies that don't do these interviews. So if I was starting over, I would start training data structures and algorithms very early. I will talk about how to actually get those interviews faster in a second. But first, the second thing I would change is the way I look at learning to code. To be honest, when I was a beginner, I had no idea what I was doing. I thought that learning to code was all about like, oh, learning one language and then just learning another and then just learning this computer science concept and then that concept, sort of like learning chemistry at school, but that's not actually Actually how learning the code works. Learning the code is not the same thing as learning computer science. It's not the same thing as learning maths, as much as some dumb people still think that it is. Programming is a craft, and the biggest things companies look for in candidates that don't have professional experience is real proof, real tangible evidence that they know how to code. And in most cases, as much as you can tell them that, oh yeah, I'm a great programmer, they will not believe you unless you can show that. And the way you show that in most cases is through real projects that you have built into your resume. But the second thing I would change is to build more and build faster. Now I left the most important change for last year. So the actual biggest thing that companies look for in candidates is not even projects. It's not even your ability to solve coding problems. The biggest thing they look for is people they want to work with. They look for the kind of person who's willing to learn and who has the right attitude. But the thing is, it's very hard to tell who is that right person from just looking at a resume, no matter how amazing your resume is, which it will be, for example, if you follow the guides in my program, link below. Okay, so then how do 
you convince them of that? Now, we would all like to believe that when you apply for jobs, you send your resume, there's like some fair process where they critically evaluate every resume and they give the interviews to the most qualified people. But in the real world, that's not actually most of the time how it works. Like if you think about a recruiter, you might have a stack of 100 resumes over here, but then you have one resume over here that has a very strong recommendation from someone at the company. So you're sitting there at work, it's 5 p.m. You really wanna go back home to play with your kids, to go and watch a movie or whatever. Are you really gonna look through these 100 resumes and critically evaluate all of them? Or are you just gonna give the interview to the person who has that strong recommendation? You're probably gonna do that and I know for a fact that this is what they do. So if you just rely on lazy easily sending applications on LinkedIn that no one ever reads because you want to apply in the fair way and you want things to be fair. Instead of looking for an unfair advantage or an unfair situation like a recommendation that you can exploit, I'm afraid you will have a very tough time. And there are tons of tech events around the world where you can do this. You can network, you can speak to these people, but you have to go out there and put your face out there because this is how you can get your face and personality out there. And this is the one strategy the one big trend that I've seen from everyone I've spoken to who's successfully gone into these companies, there's always some unfair advantage. Instead of applying online like a good boy, I would speak to more people and put myself out there. But whatever you do, don't forget, on top of just learning to code, you should be learning something called data structures and algorithms. Because if you don't learn them, even if you do everything correctly and you get these interviews, you might get into a situation where you'll just not be able to pass those interviews because you don't know the things that you need to know for these interviews. I actually went through an entire journey of also mastering data structures and algorithms completely on my own, just using the internet as well. And I made this video where I talk about exactly how I did that. So I highly recommend you also watch that that video so you can also know exactly how you can precisely go about mastering data structures and algorithms as well.